Predictions in Sunday. It's all in, baby. Sunday. Ooh, that beat slapping. Oh my God. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the channel, guys. If it's your first time here, welcome to Geekly Goods. The name is Leo Rydell. Y'all hit that subscribe button if you're new. If you're new, what are you doing? Like I said, hit that subscribe button, y'all, for content on the MCU, DCU, and beyond, guys. Today, we are going beyond to talk Oscars, final predictions, guys. And there's there's a little bit of mess going on, okay? Especially in supporting actress, right? Uh, oh, <laughs> there's a little bit of a mess going on. A lot of people picking differently here. Uh, so let's be real. I'm not entirely sure who to pick myself. So because I'm not entirely sure, I brought on some lovely guests and guys. I got some of the best content creators on YouTube, on podcasts, on Twitter, guys. I got two of some of my greatest friends. But first off, I want to say hello to the people who are in the chat. We got the laser man. I seen you here a couple hours earlier. My man, you came a little early. We got iHeart Movies, Lady Aaron, Ryan Cam. What's going on, guys? I need to get to my guests, though. I cannot wait to have them on the channel because first and foremost, it's been too long with both of them. Both of them, okay? But first off, I'm going to introduce my boy here in Colorado. Man, I love this guy, man. 
It was recently his birthday. So happy belated birthday. My man, my friend, Chili Boy Productions, Larry. What's going on, bro? <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for inviting me on tonight. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. It's always a pleasure to collaborate with you. I feel like it's been a while since we collabed, so yeah. glad I could have you on. And then Perfect. let let me get my, to my next guest as well, guys. This is somebody who I lean on for movie expertise, for Oscar expertise, because let me tell you guys, my, my expertise, I'm at about a 70 out of 100. I'm like, ah, I give myself about a C, but I would give her an A+. Plus. I'm talking about Josie Melendez. What's going on, Josie? The Josie Marie over on Twitter. Of course, I bring Hello. you in mid-drink. <laughs> so welcome. Hi. Uh, happy to be here. Also, happy belated birthday, Abuelito, our favorite person, <laughs> Larry. <laughs> Thank you. Happy belated birthday. I think a lot of people are also confused with act supporting actress. Uh, we've got... <sighs> I Heart Movie says either Carrie Condon or Jamie Lee Curtis. Now, I Heart, we need you to channel some good energy, okay? Because we need Angela Bassett to get that, right? I Heart, are you in the same boat as us? Because we need Angela Bassett. And a, a happy belated birthday to you, Larry. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah. Thanks for dropping in the laser, guys. We're just going to go category by category. Feel free to drop your predictions down in the comments. And, of course, we'll get to them. But, guys, we're going to start with best original screenplay now let Oof. me get this prepared but man this was a little bit of a twisty year for me in terms of that supporting actress but let's start with original screenplay oh geez Oof. i've been technical oh, technical out movies. yeah i'm like okay Cursed, it's okay. a cursed category. <laughs> Let's start with our nominations for original screenplay. We've got The Banshees of Anna Sharon, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Yay! Uh, The Fablemans, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. And Mr. Birthday Boy, I'm going to come to you. What's your prediction yeah. and what do you want to win for original screenplay? I have to say, I'm actually <laughs> a little bit torn on who I want to, and I'm not going to lie. Even though one of my favorite films, not one of, my favorite film of the year is nominated here, and I do want it to win, I think it's going to win Best Picture and Best Director. So low-key, I wouldn't mind if some love in this specific category was thrown to Martin McDonough, particularly because he's been nominated so many times and he's always getting sniped right at the end. Uh, so as, as long as EEAAO takes home picture and director, I kind of would like the Banshees of Inna Sharon to win here. And it's close. It's really close. If you look at these predictors, uh, it's pretty much a like toss up. Uh, the the statistics are right down the line for these two, but I think recently it's pulled away. Even with BAFTA going so hard for the Banshees of Inna Sharon, mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, my pick on who is going to win is everything everywhere all at once. I think the love for the film is going to carry it, and it just it's gotten a lot of these little precursors. So I, I think E E A A O is the the winner here, at least in my book. But I wouldn't be shocked if Banshees did take this one. Man, I don't know. I gotta go E E A A O. I'm trying yeah. to get that to sweep through. So I would Ooh. like E E A A O to win this category. But Banshees did have a great screenplay. Actually ended up reading that one. So it's pretty good. Pretty good. Josie, did you have any that you wanted predicted differently? I want Banshees to win, oh. but oh, everything man. everyone at once has that WGA. Yeah. Yeah. It was like that final push for me mm -hmm. to predict it officially. <laughs> Unless the Academy just wants to be like, everything everyone at once is winning all of these other yeah. things. Let's give Martin McDonough his little prize. <laughs> <laughs> his little prize. Give, give him one something. A but morsel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little piece. Literally. We we got the laser also agreeing with us. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once is his prediction. And then uh, Lady Aaron is going with Banshees. Okay. Okay. A little Banshees love in there. I don't know, y'all. I'm going to be real with you. I get, I get on fire for this on Twitter all the time, but I damn near fell asleep on Banshees. Oh, but anyway, no. we will roll on Leo, over to... I'm uh, leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Josie just boop, pops out. <laughs> 
We're going to move to Adapted Screenplay. And for the nominees for Adapted, we've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. And Josie, I'm going to go to you. Who's your prediction and who do you want to win? I do want to clarify. If you see me looking at my phone, it's because my list is there. <laughs> but um, I'm looking at my um, list right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm... I predicted women talking. I feel like it's one of those moments where it has been getting its praise. It is the front runner in this category. I don't care what all quiet on the Western front truthers want to make us believe. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, the, Sarah Poli needs to get something here. And it's this. Something. Something. Because they completely lost all steam. I mean, it just... Uh, leading up to the predi- or to the to the nominations, I thought they would get way more than this, but wow, completely lost steam. They got this and best picture. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I think definitely this feels like kind of like what Josie said with Mari McDonough. If for nothing else, uh, I do think it's close between All Quiet and Women Talk. You know, that BAFTA is always a, a, you just wonder how strong is that European branch going to be when it comes to this. We don't know, oh. but. Right. <laughs> At the end of the day, I think enough people are going to say we didn't even give her a shot in director. She got snubbed there. Snub. Women talking, you know, obviously they love it. They it got into best picture. So there it has a strong, you know, fan base in the academy. And I think they're gonna all kind of want to award it in the one place they can, and that's here and adapted. So I agree. I think it's women talking. Yeah, and it got the WGA, so that kind of just gives it that nice little push. Um, I think everybody's on the same page as us. Women talking. Yep, women talking. Yeah, I mean, I just, like you guys said, it feels like the one they're going to give it to them. They're, it's not going to get best picture, unfortunately, but made it in a few categories. Wow. I wish it made it in a few more, but. That unfortunately but, is debatable, Leo. I don't know if I would say, unfortunately, it's not winning best picture um, because it's uh, there's quite a few I'd rather see. With best no, picture. I hear yeah. that. I hear that. <laughs> I think I, I meant unfortunately uh, wasn't nominated oh, for oh. more things. Yeah, like uh, maybe uh, one of them supporting actresses we could have booted out. I don't know. And that's uh, crazy. <clears throat> Miss Jamie Lee. Uh, but, but anyway, <laughs> we will go to visual effects. And the nominees for visual effects are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Batman. Glad to see it getting something. Uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever and Top Gun Maverick, baby. And I just honestly, I think it's Avatar. Can you really question? It had no. let's let's be real. Off the list, it had the best visual effects, and then the last one run visual effects. And with Cameron, the technology that Cameron used to make these beautiful experiences on Pandora just can't be topped. Sorry, Top Gun, you ain't topping Avatar. Too. Yeah, this is one of the the free points on your Oscar prediction sheet. Visual yeah. effects, <laughs> it's a yeah. done deal. It's a wrap. <laughs> Check it off. We we all get that one, guys. Um, but did y'all maybe think something could sneak up? Because I got a little bit of a dark horse. I mean, my dark horse is Top Gun Maverick. I guess Me that too. would be that would be my number two. <laughs> maybe the only reason I'd say even no. it has uh, a like ten percent chance, maybe, is its mixture of practical. Uh, so uh, you know, because some, sometimes they like practical, but this is one of those categories where. If by some miracle Avatar loses, it would be the shock of the evening. Like nobody would be prepared. <laughs> It'd be a st- James Cameron would be found dead in a ditch. He would be so shook. Okay. <laughs> I mean, for real, let's be real here. This is the one it's gonna snag. It ain't getting nothing else. Ooh. So this is this is it. I, I this is the one it needs. <laughs> What's going on, John? He's predicting the Batman or Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Okay, okay, but I'm happy Black Panther Wakanda Forever is here. I got really excited when I saw it nominated. Same, because I was like worried it wouldn't get nominated for very much, but it's it's sprinkled around here. So, y'all, I had it pre- I had it predicted on uh, Best Picture. Didn't make, <laughs> didn't make the cut. Ah, oh, that PGA gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> we'll move on to production design and the nominees for this one are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, and The Fablemans. Listen, I had no idea which one of these would win. This is one of them I just was like, I'm just going to go ahead and wing it. I'm going to go ahead and pass it to you, Josie. 
who would you predict and who would you want to win this category i don't want to complicate my life i don't want to get an ulcer <laughs> over the oscars i'm going with babylon and i'm calling it a day okay all right listen i think it's gonna be all quiet Oh? I think I think there's some Academy love for All Quiet. It's so it's nominated through all these different categories. I think it's gonna snag a few of these technical ones, and I think this is one that's just gonna boop pick up. Plus the design, just the movie itself, the look, the the feel, the setting. I think that was staged so well. Um, maybe Babylon though. No, I don't know. Yeah, Auntie, I'm with Josie think? on this one. I think it's I think Babylon for the is gonna win this one. I think it's got it. Um, it's shown a little bit of weakness. Uh, this is not a like done deal category, but Babylon has kind of maintained that front runner status. And look, if they're going to do so, if they're going to award Babylon for something, it's going to be creating that old Hollywood look. So I think, I think this is where they give the love to Babylon. They didn't like it. A lot of them, but I think, I think they give it to this one. Yep. The people are on y'all side. Babylon from I Heart Movies. Babylon, Lady Aaron. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Just, just, <laughs> just the Coke room alone. The design, oh. the colors, just so everything. Good. Margot Robbie is a set piece just floating around <laughs> while people carry her. It's, it's great. Just in general. Yeah. She's just a set piece in every room. Uh, Babylon's going to win score and production design. Oh, getting a little ahead down, G. Kobe P. Mm -hmm. But okay, uh, that's a good prediction, okay, I but think. That, but, but that's a truther. That's a yeah. truther word right there. Yeah. Ooh. Well, speaking of uh, score, we're getting to that one soon, but we will start with best original song. Now, the nominees we have for this one are Applause, Hold My Hand, Lift Me Up, Not Too Not Too, and This Is a Life. And y'all, I'm going to just go ahead with this one. It's Not Too Not Too. They haven't gotten nominated for nothing else. That's the love they've been getting from across the board. I don't think anybody has not awarded not to not to. So it's a sure win. It's a sure fire win for them. I if fished. it doesn't win, <laughs> we, we riot. Okay. I think that's the one where I will riot. Like uh, how Larry was saying earlier with visual effects, that's that's gonna be me with not to not to. Yeah, this is another. I was, a, I was like full on left me up. And I'm oh. willing to go towards Team Natu Natu. <laughs> if you don't give it to Natu Natu, what was my sacrifice for? <laughs> yeah, you know I feel like this category, come on, you got to give it to the one that's in the movie, that plays an actual role in the movie. Wow. And only one yeah. of these songs does that. The rest of them are all, well, I mean, This Is A Life plays a little bit differently, but they all play over the credits. So, or, or in background ways. Natu Natu is... A part is literally part of the narrative. So mm -hmm. I, I, and as you said, people loved RRR and it just got shut yes. out everywhere else. So once again, kind of like I was saying with women talking, I think everyone's going to channel their love for the film overall into this. And we're all going to think it's deserving when they blow the roof off the place on Sunday. Cause we know that performance is about to be lit Sunday. I'm just it's about to be lit. I'm just mad we're not getting Gaga on the broadcast. I know what the heck is up with that? Did they say why? Mm. Oh, she's Joker, Joker, Joker yeah. too. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Joker. Joker. <laughs> Insert Josh Peck meme, Joker. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Tyler? Let's go, Gaga. Nah, man. Nah, listen, I do love I him, my hand, little personally. monster. I'm a little monster through and through, but I think not to not to gotta take this one. Could be a Diane dark Warren, horse, lift me up. Give it a break, girl. <laughs> I'm <laughs> listen. <laughs> everybody was searching through the depths to find this tell it like a woman. It has like one damn review <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, where do they find these songs that Diane Ware Warren wrote in a year? I just am like, ma'am. <laughs> One of these, please, someone from a major film, let Diane Warren write a song for you so she could win and we all could know the song. And then we don't have to see her get nominated for random stuff every year, please. I would say she should have written the original song for 80 for Brady, but the one we got is good enough and I'll see what? it next year. <laughs> we'll see you with 80 for Brady, Oscar nominee for best song. Fun just singing on that stage together. We're about to feel God in this silly tonight. Man, I don't know. Maybe I need to go ahead and watch that 80 for Brady. Maybe I'm <laughs> missing out. Cute. But anyways, back to these Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh man, but yeah, the chat is basically agreeing. Lady Aaron, not to not to. I Heart Movies, not to not to. G Kobe, not to not to. John's got behind, right behind, not to not to hold my hand and then lift, lift me up. Okay. I got a bit of a dark horse. I think lift me up could possibly sneak in there. Rihanna's having a big year. They got to give Black Panther kind of forever something. It has the narrative to carry it through. I think Natu Natu is, again, it's a sure win. But if I were to pick a second one, I mean, it, Black Panther literally brought Rihanna back. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Not that she was gone, but like to the music scene. And I think yeah. that enough was, plus it was a dedic- it was a dedication to Black, to like um, Chadwick Boseman. And mm-hmm. just, it represents the core of the film. So that song was pretty strong until I saw RRR and then my life changed. Oh, RRR, man, that dancing, the singing, it's just such a perfect part of that movie to create the this wonderful sing-along middle ground of the movie. Oh, I feel I like this is ready. one of those years. Yeah. I know we're going to talk about foreign language film, but this is definitely one of those years where, or not for the international film, um, you just know a country is kicking themselves and i know india (laughs) look even with all quiet on the western front in that category and it being a best picture nominee i they have to know they had a really good chance at upsetting and winning that dang international film uh this year but at least we'll get this one it'll be fun when's the last time we had a full uh, a song in a foreign language win for best original song a song not in english i'm not sure it's been a while um dos orguitas was supposed to do it but billy eilish came in nope i'll never let that go (laughs) swipe that (laughs) 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 uh yeah that's do you guys know what india nominated what they pushed uh, for uh, last film show, if I'm not mistaken, probably uh, I might be getting the title wrong, but I did see that movie a while ago, and it's good. Yep. But not to not to just had more more. It just reminds me of Portrait yeah. all over again with France nominating oh, Les Mis <laughs> instead of Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Ugh. Don't Ugh. remind me. Ugh. Come on, man. It's because Neon Portrait wanted to push Parasite, be. and it was a. Whole and that's thing. another one. I think even though we had Parasite that year, particularly, I think. Portrait could have beaten Parasite in international mm-hmm. because so because all of the love was going to uh, yeah. Parasite in picture. I yeah. think uh, it would have had enough support to be like, all right, we'll vote for Parasite in picture and vote for Portrait in international. In international. But Ooh-wee. no, they didn't do it. Yeah, what a <laughs> snub, man. Oh, Ugh, that that was was <laughs> oh, Dives is saying, what's going on, Dives? Saying everything everywhere all at once for this okay. one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got that one, I think, at the flat bottom right above. I mean, This Is a Life is a great song. Applause is last. Let's be clear. It's it's my favorite favorite out of these picks. This Is a Life is your favorite? Yeah, I love that song. Not to, not to? I know. (laughs) Come on. Not to, not to a whole jam, y'all. I'm glad we got like an upbeat, cheery, good one in here. But, I mean, hey, maybe Lift Me Up takes it and then... Oh, there goes my entire art, our prediction and the people in the chat. But guys, let's move on to score. And for those nominees, we've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon. Man, that Babylon one is a banger, y'all. Uh, Banshees of Inner Sharon, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and The Fablemans. I love you, John Williams, but come on. Um, and I'm going to go to Larry for this one. What is your prediction and what do you want to win? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of amazing scores this year. I don't know about y'all, but I thought I just my list kept just growing on like amazing scores I loved. And so I don't know if we can say snubs or what, but there's just so many like women talking, not making it in here was a a big disappointment for me. Pinocchio not making it in here was very disappointing to me. Um, I personally would have kicked out Banshees and Fablemans to put those two in, but that's just me personally. Um, (laughs) But I was very happy actually to see everything all at once. Wait, you're sure? Oh, and we want to talk about short lists. (laughs) The Batman. The Batman. Forget the nominees. If we're talking about who I think should win this award, it's right here. It's the Batman Bingo. winner for best original score 2020 to 2023. Um, but out of the nominees, Babylon is my pick on who I want to win. Um, 
Okay. It's fire. It is a fire score. Good. I think it, uh, Justin Hurwitz is so fantastic. Every time, I mean, every time he collabs with, uh, oh, what's his name? It's Chazelle. It's fire. <laughs> Each and every What's deal. his name? Fire. <laughs> now I know I'm, I'm going to differ from you two on this one because you all already said oh. you thought Babylon is taking it. And mm -hmm. I, this is the toss up for me. I think this uh -oh. one is so close, but ultimately, my prediction is that All Quiet on the Western Front is what? going to win Best Original Score. You think that old ball going <laughs> to carry them to a win? Come on now. Oh, I'm just saying. Not I think, an oboe. I haven't seen it. I think. Oh, you haven't? <laughs> it's got this like, you, oh, that look, layers through in multiple scenes. <laughs> come on now. If you read, okay, so I know we don't put much stock into them, but I think it gives us a mindset of, especially a lot of these older folks in the Academy that vote, they just dismiss movies they don't like. So they're just like, I don't like that movie. I'm not voting for it uh, in categories. And I think Babylon is going to get shafted because I think it still ekes out production. But I just, I think they're going to push it to the side because they just hate the movie and they're going to give it to the movie they like more. And that's all quiet. That's that's how I, that's my ultimate decision. The, the BAFTA is what pushed it over the edge for me when All Quiet went over there. It, Babylon's up. lost a little bit of steam since that Golden Globe win. It's, it's yeah. losing that steam. So I'm going quiet on this one. But I know you two <laughs> are going Babylon, right? Oh, absolutely. That Babylon yeah. score is phenomenal. <laughs> It literally <laughs> carries that movie. That that score is fantastic, okay? I I remember getting out of the screening and I just immediately had Call Me Manny on. I was just like, this this is a whole jam. Uh, I, I, I think it's unanimous, in my opinion, that it's going to be Babylon. But maybe All Quiet can sneak out. <laughs> it hasn't had much love, but I think this is the only love it's going to get. I don't even think it's going to get production design, so we're, we're flip-flop. See, we yeah, we flip-flopped on All Quiet taking yeah. it down in categories. <laughs> All Quiet just cleaned up at the Baptist, didn't it? They love that. All Quiet and Banshees. That. That's the only two movies they watched over there. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so, because didn't Barry Keegan win supporting mm -hmm. actor? And I'm like, what the hell? He, he prevented he our sweep. Quiet? He did, yeah, He kept Ki Hoi Kwan from sweeping the season. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> okay, guys, let's move on to our next category. Sound. And we've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Batman. At least it got into one of these categories in the sound, okay? Like, geez. Uh, Elvis and Top Gun Maverick. And I'll go ahead and take this one, guys. I think, I think it's got to go to Top Gun Maverick, right? I mean, the jet sweeps, the use of sound. I feel like this is, in my opinion, the only one a surefire gets. I, I don't think it's getting editing. I definitely think it's taking it in this one, though. I feel like uh, the sound, the use of sound in this movie is just so good. And man, honestly, I would have put it in cinematography. I don't know how it didn't make it there, too. But whatever. I'm not the one who decides. Uh, but did you guys have another one for sound? No. I also Top think Gun? Top Gun Maverick is my prediction. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. think it's a surefire win, though, Leo. <laughs> I think again what? that all look in all these technical categories. I think it's between fill in the blank movie and All Quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> it's like yes. All Quiet is the second pick in every one. Yeah. They love a war movie when it comes to the sound category. Personally, once again, I would be voting for the Batman uh, on my own personal ballot, <laughs> but um, I, I do think Top Gun would be a deserving winner. So. I'm like, what did I put for Cinemania World? <laughs> <laughs> I put All Cinemania. Quiet. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay, Larry. Yeah. Okay, Daisy. I because at first I'm honestly between the two of them, I can't decide. I think it could go either way. I think they both have good odds. All Quiet. I haven't seen it again. I'm gonna try to because it's literally the only Best Picture nominee I haven't seen. All Quiet has been nominated for so many things, so yeah. it's easy to pick that one, but also. We were talking about this earlier before you came on, Larry. I think the Top Gun could win because I think All Quiet is getting another category that we're going to come up to soon. So maybe this could be the only chance Top Gun could get an award this evening. So it could easily go to it as well. But again, I wish I could say like a surefire answer because it's that the both of them have solid 
ground to stand on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Top Gun with them jet sweeps and the dog fighting. And the, I know. The I would give it to Top Gun. I'm not yeah. the biggest Top Gun fan, <laughs> but I would Ooh. give it to Top Gun. So I, I'm not a big, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the original, but Maverick, that had me crazy. <laughs> It's it's one of those things where again it's not one of my favorites, <laughs> but I watch it it's good. and like I hear it and I sit down because at least like the sound is captivating, which is yes. why I would love to go with Top Gun. And and then Miles Teller on the piano and stuff. There's just a <laughs> lot of great uses of sound, but I gotta go with my man G. Kobe's comment here. We're going to the danger zone, y'all. It's, I feel like Top Gun Maverick is is for sure gonna happen, but. All Quiet does have a good chance. Uh, we got some more from the laser, Top Gun, all the jet noises. Yes, incredible. Uh, oh, Avatar Way of Water. Okay. <laughs> the laser. Chair. You love oh. that Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Let's guys. just go with Top Gun. <laughs> Call yeah, it a night. I think, I think <laughs> it's Top Gun, too. Plus the way you they mix in the dialogue with just the huge sound and getting the dialogue through. Nolan, take oh, yeah. a couple if notes. We, Nolan. <laughs> If we still had sound mixing and sound editing, this would yeah. totally get mixing. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. You know what, though, Larry? I'm glad I watched Tenet with uh, subtitles for the first time. because I was Tenet like, is oh, great, though. <laughs> <laughs> I had to read a little bit. Like, I, I don't know what the hell they're saying, but it's something good. I ordered my hot sauce an hour ago. <laughs> All right, guys. Nominees for makeup and hairstyling. We got All Quiet on the Western Front. The Batman, creeping in another one here, but didn't get his score. Uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, and The Whale. And I'm going to go to you, Larry. What you think? What makeup and hairstyle and prediction and what you want to win? Now, listen, I'm going to sound like a broken record. But once again, if I had a ballot, I would be voting for The Batman. Uh, because, <laughs> look, we're about to award the two that are up for this that have a legitimate chance to win. Are basically like, oh, look at the prosthetics. Look what we're able to right. do. The Batman did it too. And in my opinion, on Colin Farrell did it better yeah. than what the Elvis and the Whale did. But that's just me. I think they did it better. Plus, I think they demonstrate so many different styles of mm -hmm. makeup and hairstyling that the Whale, that's my big hindrance with the Whale, is I do think that the prosthetics look great, but that's it. Like, none of the other characters have anything of note or a value. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I think that's why Elvis is the one I'm predicting here. It does have the prosthetics work, especially as we get towards the end there, but it also has literal hair and makeup all, everywhere, like everywhere you're going. Now, that Tom Hanks work, questionable. <laughs> Real questionable. And Tom you know, Hanks in that movie, period, is questionable. And honestly, if we were talking, if hairstyle, if people took hair more into this, uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever should sure enough be up at the top of this because didn't any of these other ones touch it when it comes to just actual art with the hair. But yeah. I think ultimately they're going to go with the best picture nominee here and they're going to go with Elvis. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's my prediction as well, Elvis. But man, I would love the Batman. Even when he's like pulling the cowl off and you got the dark eyes and it's so uh, it's, so, it's such a cool look. I, I, I think everybody else is with, with you, man. Elvis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Elvis. This one's Elvis. Is. Elvis yeah. from iHeart. Yep. Elvis is winning. Yep. Yes. It's gonna be Elvis. Sorry, but Batman. I would like to see Black Panther. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. You know what? That could be a, a dark horse. It, Black Panther 1 did get it. It did. I, but I think if Elvis loses, the whale is winning. Yeah, I, I'm okay giving it to Elvis here and Black Panther winning another Ooh. category. Uh-oh. Okay, okay. We'll get to it soon. <laughs> oh, we're getting to a 10 now. <laughs> oh, boom. Spoilers. <laughs> Black Panther. Case closed. Well, I'm a <laughs> well, I'm going to go to you then. Uh, but our, our nominees, we got Babylon, Black Panther 2, Elvis, EEAAO, and Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. I'm going to go to you, Josie. This is Black Panther down there. I know everything everyone at once has been winning awards for costume design and Elvis too. I want to see Black Panther Wakanda forever win this. I want Ruth Carter to win for a second time for Amen. like the Blank Panther universe. Just give it to her. The costumes are the are so good. 
it it makes a movie. Their characters in and of itself. They're they're literally functioning for it. I can't even no. <laughs> Give it to Black Panther, I will write. I mean, the Namor outfit was great, okay? I agree. Um, <laughs> so that Shuri's Black Panther suit, just everything in that movie. I was like, man, people were clowning on Riri's robotic. I, I thought that was cool. I thought I actually thought her iron heart looked awesome. Yes, it looked like a Power Ranger, but oh well. Um, but there's one I think it's missing here. Uh, I think the Batman should have been in there. Yeah. I mean, I know Leo, this category finally got you to watch a Mrs. Harris and you loved it. Love that Mrs. Harris goes <laughs> to Paris, y'all. I was like, wow, this is Paddington vibes right here. <laughs> Love it. Loved how wholesome it was. And I'll be honest with y'all. I wouldn't mind seeing Mrs. Harris win. Ooh. I know she don't got a single chance, but no. Yeah, I don't I think Babylon or Mrs. Harris. Harris have a chance here. They're 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 way 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 behind the rest of the pack on this hey, one. Let me let me make sure because I was like, did I pick Bab? I picked Babylon. <laughs> ah, uh, <laughs> this was one I, I had no right idea. There. Now I have to. Uh, I have to do it. So I want if I'm picking, I'm picking Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Yes. Unfortunately, my don't actual put it, don't prediction. Put it out there. <laughs> don't put it out there. Is Elvis is going <laughs> to win this one? Once uh, that that damn guild, the costuming guild, awarding everything everywhere over Black Panther Wakanda forever, like really shook my confidence in Black Panther being able to win this award. <laughs> and Elvis still won there. I just, uh, I, it gets so frustrating with biopics because they have a template to work from. Yeah. And it is hard to update costumes, but not as hard as it is to literally create a world of costumes mm -hmm. that we've never seen, that we have never even could imagine. And that's what Black Panther does. Plus, once again, it goes with the hairstyling. I don't know if they'll include it as like hairstyling, but the the head pieces that Ramonda wears are oh, so amazing so in this movie too. Oh, totally. It's like head to toe costuming in Wakanda Forever. So I I want Wakanda Forever to win, but my gut tells me my prediction is Elvis. And See, even in the think, oh go ahead, Joseph. Yeah. Uh, I think Black Panther and everything everyone at once have more of a chance than Elvis. And maybe I'll eat my words, but I think mm -hmm. if you're gonna pick something that's newer since black panther won last time yeah. everything ever while at once is literally an array of costumes yeah. that happen oh, in yeah. seconds and i think that would be cool i mean even just the fact that like some of them are just like one one shot of a quick <laughs> costume change you know she's in the pizza yeah. outfit and we barely see it in the movie and it's just like cool how much they use and travel to different universes black panther <laughs> too uh too yeah. as well though i really do like the beginning with the white that was super yeah. clean, Ugh. and they come back to that later in the movie. And then the the Dormelage do a suit change as well. Like mm -hmm. I just, I really like all the suits in Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. And y'all need to quit clowning about the Dormelage's armor now. Quit that <laughs> clowning. I know, I know, y'all be clowning on it. Yep. It looks pretty good to me. <laughs> uh, but I think everybody's agreeing. <laughs> John saying, "Who's in Paris?" That was me as well. Leo's, Leo's in Paris. <laughs> Mrs. Harris goes to Paris, has to be watched, John. If you haven't checked it out, you've got to watch that, man. Uh, Elvis from iHeart. Yeah, I think we're all anonymous. I Listen, I, I'm I'm Babylon. I, I totally I'd have to no idea it. who's going to win this category. So I just went with Babylon because it's I'm like, okay, it's going to be something. It is yeah, a good it's category. Stacked. I, I think something could have... I don't know. I'm like, something could have been etched out for the Batman. Maybe Elvis. <laughs> but let's move to the next one. We'll go to international feature film. Oof. And we've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Argentina, Close, EO, The Quiet Girl as nominees. So sad that RRR isn't here, but honestly, guys, All Quiet on the Western Front. I think this might be another one you could just boop, check off. Yeah. The best picture nominee and it's not going to win best picture so yep well i guess it could in some people's minds it still has a chance but uh it's not it's not winning best picture so oh uh, for the first time ever i went to gold derby to like get some <laughs> insight on the shorts and i saw all quiet and best picture i was like get me out of here 
<laughs> but like some people were predicting all quiet and i'm like no mm-hmm. but uh for best picture but in here i do think i mean it's been nominated for so many categories it was yeah. the surprise of nomination morning how are you not going to give an international feature now a lot of people are predicting argentina 1985 so i think that's the only one that could um snub well not snub but you know upset all upset. quiet on the western front yeah, my little EO, I'm just happy you made it in, EO. <laughs> Poor EO. At least it made it, you know. <laughs> the worst decision to leave, bro. Yeah, what the heck? The decision to leave was great. Uh, uh, I'm also sad, Corsage. I was hoping maybe it could sneak in, get that last little knob, but we're okay. Yep, we got everybody else agreeing on quiet. <laughs> the laser said, I've never even seen it, but just doing it because he wants to. <laughs> Hey, I, I hear it. it. It's, I'm predicting it's, it's stacking it. It's up. fine. <laughs> yeah. It's so stacked up and, and BAFTA's it cleaned up. It's got to take this one. It's not going to, yeah. like Larry said, it's not going to take Best Picture. And we've got Documentary Feature. Ooh. And I've watched <laughs> one movie. I've watched one movie in Documentary Feature. Uh, <laughs> yep, Fire of Love. That's the one I watched. I, I'm picking that, but. We've got our nominees for All That Please, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, The Fire of Love, A House Made of Splinters, and Navel Me? Navel Me? I don't know how to say that, to be honest. But I'm going to go to you, Josie. Pick. And what I think it's the same as what you want, right? <laughs> yeah, Fire of Love. I think All the Beauty and the Bloodshed is the upset. A lot of people are saying, I call it Navalny. I'm probably wrong. I haven't heard you say this out loud. I've only like read it. (laughs) So um, people are predicting that one actually. And the other two, not as much. So I still think Fire of Love is going to win. I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But um, Barry Jenkins um, endorsed it and said he voted for Fire of Love. Uh, a couple of other people. Sarah Dosa has been sharing on her Instagram other Oscar voters that have said that they voted for it. So I think it has a chance. It's National yep. Geographic. It's Disney. All the Beauty and the Bloodshed is a little bit darker. So it's kind of like um, Power of the Dog last year where everyone thought Power of the Dog was going to win. But it was a lot darker than Coda. And we went with a more uplifting film. All the Beauty and the Bloodshed um, is a little bit darker than Fire of Love. With Fire of Love mm. is more uplifting. Also, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, a lot of people don't agree as much with it not because of the subject matter but because it feels like two stories in one that don't intersect Mm. as much as as they should so fire blood (laughs) i'm just trying not to see i am an expert here man because i'm like i ain't seen none of these movies (laughs) Uh, i'm biased towards fire of love but I, i i support i support the bias You've been championing that fire of love. But we say you. No, because it's also just one of those things where um, <laughs> maybe controversial. I liked my octopus teacher and it won best documentary. Me too. <laughs> I Everybody love... else clowned it and I liked it. I love Summer of Soul and it oh, won best see? documentary feature. This year I love Fire of Love. So by law, <laughs> by law. This is fire Buzzy's category. Really by yes, yes. Okay. I predict this category I move the stars and everything to make it happen. <laughs> this is another one where I'm basically in a toss up like this is a really close category this year I would love to see Fire of Love take this I think ultimately I did go with Navalny um, at the end of it it's really topical obviously it's about Russia uh, it's a way that Academy voters can give a nice little screw Putin type of moment <laughs> Is that like some art? <laughs> so we'll see but they love uh you know they they've shown they love an uplifting documentary so uh, the two that josie just talked about they're like really pull at the heartstrings kind of like get you up and excited <laughs> and fire of love is kind of that documentary here amongst yeah, a like, much heavier field <laughs> yeah i'm going with fire of love y'all but hey, maybe Naval Neil sneak up. Maybe all the beauty and bloodshed. No idea what it's about. Haven't seen it. It would be crazy if Navalny does win because it was a late addition to Sundance. All the beauty and the bloodshed has been getting so much love that I got worried for Fire of Love. I thought all the beauty and the bloodshed was the front runner, but now everyone's saying they're voting for Navalny, and I'm like, what? <laughs> 
they're turning <laughs> against you. <laughs> it's that it's, it's so hard. I mean, this season has just been nuts. Like, like you said, all the beauty and the bloodshed started as a front runner, and then once the early precursors started happening, Fire of Love got this huge momentum boost. But I think it's one of the most awarded ones yeah, this season. It got really big, and then late in the game, Navalny had a very late push, including the Baftas, that really kind of like pushed it up here. So it's just like. Why Why are they, they, these voters this year are just all over the place. And I mean, it makes it fun, but also it's going to make my prediction sheet probably look a lot worse than it has in years. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that one loser that was in the beginning of the uh, poll of the article talking about that stuff about Woman King, I want them to come oh, on out. That, oh, I want to hate come out face. Oh my God. Like, that entertainment weekly. Yeah. Stand behind your words, sir. Come forward. Come and on forward. <laughs> you seem real confident in those words you said. So <laughs> right. be confident enough to say it out loud. No, and proud. When that person said like, sweetheart, I, oh, I was, oh, I was ready to I, fight. I saw red. <laughs> y'all. I, I don't care if you're anonymous. Red. And lady director. Um, oh no. Excuse me, I said the name, oh, right. No. Gina that Gina had to have wood. been a white man who interviewed that person because I'm if talking. they they only feel comfortable enough to talk like that if they're talking to a white man there couldn't have been any other kind of person interviewing them and if you are sitting there hearing someone talk like that i don't care some people think it's bad interview etiquette and you don't put their feet to the fire and check them on not, not even being able to say the lady director's name right, right. no you should be ashamed mm -hmm. if you did not yeah you know speak up during that interview because that is and it's, really terrible it's like they tried to correct them in the writing because you could see yeah. that there was some critique to what that mm -hmm. person was saying but at the end of the i was like what is this Oof, trash right, <laughs> terrible. right don't don't let them just no get and saying that. that um the oscars are being called out for diversity for, yeah but then it was like <sighs> this political nonsense and woke culture and i'm like okay someone burn this yeah somebody what the hell? i was just so happy that they had a director right underneath the actor who was like <laughs> they purposely excluded women this year there's no other explanation for what this boy ish <sighs> is i was like yeah that's yeah. more like it. it's like gina come on should have <sighs> got in there man sarah polly come on somebody we had plenty oh, of great God. women directors who, who did after sun I know uh, that Charlotte was, Wells. Charlotte Wells could have could have had Charlotte her. Charlotte Wells should have been there. Paul Mescal got in. Why yeah. not Charlotte? What the fuck? Yeah. Charlotte made him look good. I know he's he's attractive, but he made him look good. We're kind of all over the place in the comments with this prediction. Mm -hmm. Navalny here. Um, <laughs> the ladies are just saying because he wants to feel good about life. He's going with all that breeds. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't seen any of these either. I heart. I haven't seen. I've seen Fire of Love. That's the one. And my one last year was uh was Summer of Soul. Summer of Soul. And it won. So maybe you're like Josie. Maybe if you watch the documentary, yes. it wins. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So don't watch any of the rest this weekend before the show, Leo. Just watch Fire Love and Manifest <laughs> the Wind. Watch Navalny. <laughs> Do not watch Navalny. Because <laughs> the only one I watched last year was Summer of Soul. So okay, the only <laughs> one I watch is the winner. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Now, Larry, I'm definitely going to you for this one. Ooh. We've got Best Animated Feature here, and our nominees for this category are GDT Pinocchio. Uh, why did I say it like that, Pinocchio? Uh, Marcel the Shell with shoes on. So cute. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, The Sea Ooh. Beast, and Turning Red. Can I be honest with you guys? I think this is such a stacked category. Yes. I, was <laughs> I was like, like oh, any choose of these, your words carefully. Right. I'm like, if I, if if any of these won, just snuck up kind of dark horse, oh, oh my gosh, it's Marcel, I would I would be happy. Yeah, and I'm glad you finally yeah. watched The Sea Beast. Oh, it's so uh, good, guys. It's so, so good. good. <laughs> this was honestly one of like my shining moments of the morning when they said yeah. the sea beast because yes. Yes. I thought it had a chance. Like people weren't really predicting it, and I didn't know why because it was getting in at the Annie's. Like it was getting a lot of technical little categories from the animation community that I was like, the sea beast could take that fifth spot. So I was so just cute. so happy. <laughs> and outside of uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, which would be in my mix. Oh, this is man. my five. Like, these were my five favorite yeah. animated yeah. films of the year. So I was hyped that this, I mean, this category, flawless, no notes, oh, perfect. I love it. Um, <laughs> but this is, 
it's another uh this is another gimme y'all so if we're gonna win one if you're gonna get a prediction right on your prediction card this is the next category it's visual yeah. effects and it's animated feature they're done deals wrap it mm-hmm. up give guillermo the award because pinocchio yep. Has literally swept the entire season. I think it's the Ooh. only uh, thing that at every single precursor has won. I mean, it oh, has really? dominated. <laughs> Let me declare this category locked. Locked. Yep, this locked. is a lock. This is a gimme point. If there were one to maybe try to sneak up, I do think it is Marcel. Okay. But I think some voters are still kind of iffy on the animation portion. I don't think they fully understand. I actually think A24 should have done a little bit more to push how it was animated um because i think people are still like this isn't really an animated film when in reality they recreated (laughs) so many things to make small animation set pieces um and i think they should have done a little bit better whereas guillermo pushed it (laughs) yeah guillermo was like talking about it he was like yeah we we took our time with this stop motion okay Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I think it deserves it. I mean, it, I mean, it didn't win the Annie, right? I'm, if won I'm the not Annie, mistaken. won the Annie. BAFTA, won yep, the BAFTA, Golden Globe. Golden Globe. So it's <laughs> sweeping around. It's won the a PGA for animation. I mean, it's literally won every single animation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be happy for it because uh, we haven't had a stop motion. So I'll be happy to see that like get its due in this category after so long. You know, I would love to see them give that to Leica because I think that studio needs the help too. And it should have won. Uh, it should have oh, yeah. beaten Disney a couple of these years. Oh. I'm just going to say it, but um, it'll be nice. Man, it's, I think that's the best part of this category too, that... The Sea Beast is a Netflix film. Puss in Boots is DreamWorks. Marcella Shell is A24. Gamer yeah, Dora is also Netflix. And then you have Turning Red, which is actually the underdog, which is a Disney yeah. film. And Disney films are usually yeah. a shoe in. So it's crazy that we're getting this year. Unfortunately, it's also such a good story. It's Domi Shi. Great directing. A one Again, a wonderful story. Sad that this is the year that Disney is the underdog. <laughs> <laughs> but also what a wonderful promise for the future of animation yeah it I mean, just is so sad, sad to me that uh you know with all the categories that i think pinocchio could have gotten nominated for this year this was like a year where we could have seen an animated film break out of this category yeah, for once for and they snubbed it they snubbed it in yeah. score they snubbed it in production design yeah. they snubbed it in you know adapted screenplay like there were mm-hmm. so many categories i was really kind of like holding out hope that pinocchio could sneak into and in a year where guillermo is literally telling the academy stop disrespecting animation <laughs> <laughs> they disrespect <laughs> animation so that yo that, that speech was awesome how he literally told the people he said listen animation is a film format it's film y'all like yeah. stop trying to treat animation like it's lesser yeah. it should have been it should have been nominated for best picture honestly i think, I so. think gdt should have been in that lineup um but i don't know i wonder why they keep why, is there a reason why they keep keeping it in animated like uh, square boxed in like this because there are so many animated movies time, that could be is it toy story 3 the last time an animated film snuck into best picture best picture i think i think so yeah Yeah. it's been so over 10 years since we've had an animated film in best picture it's uh, and And i think the only the only one that's won has been beauty and the beast right as uh, yeah that one got in when there was only five but it didn't win um i think it lost it lost to silence of the lambs which is you know um (laughs) so that's a fun world it's the the only animated film to be nominated when they only had five nominees um Mm, and since then i think it's only been like up and toy story 3 that have made it in so and you think about it into the spider verse has come out in the past decade i mean we've had some amazing animated films Hmm. spider verse spider verse was the year that i was like this was the best film of the year what the heck is happening yeah Nothing. right no, BB. no love best no picture. love outside of animated i think kubo and the two strings got something it got like a random nomination outside of animation but yeah very Ooh, toy story yeah. did but very rarely other than song obviously animated films get nominated for best original song but that's it of all the ones to get nominated for something else kubo oh no. Oh, not the Kubo. Not the Kubo's bad. It's not bad. I'm just like compared to some of the stuff Leo. we had. I don't know. know. Them fighting words. Leo, I love Kubo. <laughs> Leo. Oh, there Kubo. it is. He said it. Kubo got a VFX nod. I knew it got a second nomination. Gotcha. Out animation, gotcha. But 
And I said this before on Twitter, especially with Pinocchio or Marcel, the show with shoes on. Honestly, almost every single time one comes out, there's no reason almost all um, stop motion animation should not be in the contention to win production design each and every time. The work that goes into making these films and the production design they have to create from top to bottom, like they have to literally create the whole world in a production yeah. design. And so the fact that they've never been nominated for production design and yet Avatar gets oh. nominated for blending CGI production design with very minimal actual real world it's production. Really the same thing. Right. Yeah. Like, it's come on. Like, so I'm sure cool. there are differences, but the fact yeah. that you are valuing more of the efforts of Avatar as opposed to animation when mm -hmm. literally you are like the, most of these films do use CGI with the exception of Game yeah. Ride, which still does have CGI implemented into yeah. it. Sometimes that's mm -hmm. you add details, but like most of the things is stop motion. But then again, with Marcel the Shell, you have drawings, you have the animation, you have the yeah. stop motion mixed in. Yeah. So it's all these elements. And yet you're like, nah, nah. wait, what Avatar is doing is actually pretty cool. Like, <laughs> it's just frustrating. It's frustrating. It looks like we're also a unanimous um, yeah. Pinocchio in the comments. Keezy actually wants Marcel to win. Thinks mm -hmm. he thinks uh, Marcel deserves it. I would love Marcel. Got a poos in boots. Okay. Do a little poos. That'd, that'd be cool. Listen, if any of these win, I'm down. Yeah. Unfortunately, Super. it's locked. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, <laughs> it's a lock. It's like a 95, really, it's a 99.9% .9 chance that Pinocchio is yeah. taking this. <laughs> and if anything, I feel like Marcel would be the next one. Like, that's that's right up under. But yeah. John's also going with Marcel. Chip and Dale, great Ooh. movie. Yeah. I think I saw another one here. Well, repost your comment if oh, another mm -hmm. Poos and Boots really wants Poos and Boots to win. Or Turning Red. Yeah, Turning Red, yeah, that's just got no chance, unfortunately. Great film, great film, but it's just got no chance. They gave us Four Town. They gave us life. And Four Town didn't get nominated. Got snubbed. Was, uh, <laughs> I'm like, come on, song was right there. This, this was the year to give Billie Eilish. Right? And her Move, Di Diane Warren, I blame you. <laughs> I blame you. <laughs> Just gotta give her that one, man. It's like, why? It. <laughs> oh man. Well, we will go to the next one with best film editing. We've got the Banshees of Inna Sharon, Elvis, E E A A O, Tar, and Top Gun Maverick. Now, I feel like this one's between E E A A O and Top Gun, but I think E A A O deserves it. I mean, like mm -hmm. all this editing through the multiverse that they do, it's gonna win freaking amazing like it's got it's gotta win right i don't think anything else is gonna creep up and and win this one elvis with all these weird sweeping shots and the different scenes i don't know man that that one no give it to uh, everything Bans everywhere at once it needs this category it needs yeah. it i mean it could still win best picture with original screenplay but it needs an editing it needs an editing win larry yeah. you got a dark horse in there no, I agree with you, Leo. I think it's between Everything Everywhere All at Once and Top Gun Maverick. Uh, the the old school wisdom is that, you know, you have to have a Best Sound nomination to win Best Film Editing and Everything Everywhere Missed in Best Sound, which was questionable as well when it missed. Um, so that's why a lot of people still have Top Gun Maverick right there with it. It has won a precursor too, but... Everything Everywhere has really been pulling away in those mm -hmm. precursors recently. I think it has it. And they, they always talk about, you know, they like to award the most flashy editing, the most editing. That could be yeah. argued for Elvis. I mean, Elvis is in the conversation for the most editing as well. But yes, Everything well. Everywhere has the most and it's done much better. It's it was also a smaller group. It was a term yeah. of people. It, yeah. it, was, it just proves how, like, wh how, what you can do if you want to make a movie that you don't need like big productions or a fancy film degree, Ooh, it's, po it, it's possible. The folks are reading swearing. Elvis for filth in the comments. They are reading yeah. Elvis down. Yeah, I'm seeing this. That's my favorite one. <laughs> so help me God if Elvis was anything. You know what? I'm with I you, mean, the, I, don't... The, the, I mean, come on. How can you not give an award to like the Ferris wheel turning into the eye? And then yeah, like the man. casino the, tilting the to the side. And then him walking in between the little slots. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like, a fever dream. Uh... 
better not again, be all this. And again, I think it's why are we? <laughs> why are stop be motion? This is another category. Stop motion stop should be motion. considered for oh, best yeah. editing. Like it has so much editing that requires literally <laughs> it to happen at all for a movie to even be made. It has to be crazy. edited together. Kick <laughs> Elvis the hell out of here and put in Pinocchio. What are we doing? <laughs> Tyler's still recovering from Bohemia Rhapsody. <laughs> no, I like Tyler's, Tyler's suggestion. He said, since Gaga isn't showing up to the awards, give her spot to Four Town on Oscar yes. night. <laughs> Are they performing? No. No. Damn. <laughs> Jer Jordan <laughs> Fisher's in Broadway right now. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, that one hurt me, too. That one hurt me, too. This one is, listen, Oof. so... Cinematography is one. When I see all the, the nominees, I was like, really? Larry. No Top Gun. No Black Panther. The Batman. What are we doing here? No, no Batman. Ba no Babylon. What are we doing here? Babylon. Okay, so our nominees, All Quiet, Bardo, False Chronicles of Handful of Truths. Still haven't seen that one. Elvis, Empire of Light, which takes place in a movie theater. But hey, it's Roger Deakin, so. And Tar. And tar, tar, tar. But cinematography, I don't know, man. <laughs> Listen, it's got some well-framed shots. Tar is the, great. The one where her, she's just like spreading the wings. That's cool, but I, I could take that out for Top Gun. <laughs> yeah. Um, if Elvis, I'm going to predict, what though, are we I'm doing here? On. Like, I mean, I know right. it's Mandy Walker. I'm happy to see a woman in here. And she has a chance. I think it's actually between Elvis and All Quiet on the Western Front to win yeah. this thing. Yeah. Um, so, look, if Elvis wins, I'll be celebrating history made. A woman winning this award. I won't be celebrating Elvis winning this award. <laughs> I'll be celebrating <laughs> Mandy Walker as a woman winning cinematography. Um, I think ultimately my prediction was All Quiet, though. Mine, too. Yeah, same. All quiet. And, and and honestly, I want a different layout. I, I think this is a weak, weak, weak category. Yo, I haven't seen Bardo, branch? though, so I don't know. The cinematography branch is actually pretty wild. They act up every year almost. <laughs> and <laughs> Literally, honestly. Top Gun Maverick was sweeping award season and then <laughs> shockingly missed here. Like, and, no. and, you know, so me and Josie, weird. we already talked. We didn't you know, we're not on the love, love, love train of Top Gun mm -hmm. like y'all. But the stuff they had to do to film, they like literally invented a way of filmmaking to get the shots that they got. I mean, if that's not cinematography, I don't understand. But, you know, they thought they thought Elvis <laughs> and they saw Roger Deakins and said, let him in. <laughs> if I'm being we honest, the best one here in terms of cinematography is Bardo. Really? Ooh. Yeah. That's not gonna win. I haven't oh. seen it, but god damn it, that trailer makes me cry every time because it looks so great. You ain't even seen it though. Have you, you seen the trailer? It the best. <laughs> Have you seen the trailer? I haven't. I haven't seen the trailer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just right, the trailer. Well, there are okay, so many really good shots that in that trailer. Because I'm like, I don't know. I mm -hmm. listen, boot them all out for Top Gun. We got these cool Ooh. shots in the cockpit. We got dog fighting. We, I mean, come on. That camera movement was absolutely excellent. How the hell did it miss? I, I don't know. But they said that of... tracking shot of Kate Blanchett angrily walking toward the camera to that booth. That's the cinematography for us this year, y'all. Ah, oh, hell no. Tar. <laughs> we got another one for Tar. Okay. okay. All quiet prediction. Not trying to sound like fanboy, but Batman and Maverick. Yes, Batman. What's going on, Mike? But yes, Batman. Absolutely. I agree. Should have been there. We could, we could, maybe we keep Bardo because I haven't seen the trailer. <laughs> but if we get rid of, we could get rid of Tar. Really we can cool. get rid of Empire Light. I don't give a shit. Empire Light. Ooh. Listen, it's shot well. It is it nice. Beautiful. It is lit beautifully. That is a nice, well lit theater. Get the hell out of here, man. We could have the Batman running it in this one the batman looked Shut beautiful up, and the fact that it was snapped in this category is a slight against god oh, raging yeah that was one of my big rage moments of that damn morning <laughs> <laughs> well i think rage. our biggest rage moment is coming up uh, <laughs> well okay <laughs> yes all of ours yeah <laughs> that category is where i literally raged on oscar nomination literally rage, but my first rage was <laughs> batman getting snubbed here yeah, I was like, 
okay, um, this is a weird category. I remember reacting to this and I was like, Bardo, the hell? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keezy's going with all quiet, but my, maybe Tar. Maybe Tar will be picked. Let's go to our next one. Actor in a supporting role. We've got Brendan Gleeson, Brian Tyree Henry, Judd Hirsch, Barry Keegan, and Kie Kwan from Everything Everywhere All at Once. And this is another one we can all pretty much mark off. It's Kie Kwan. Is there anybody else that's going to sneak up? No. I, I we definitely declare think we're this them. category yep. locked. Locked. <laughs> <laughs> it's a done deal. Yep. I don't think any of us. I don't even think anybody in the comments, I don't think anybody's got anybody sneaking up, but I was happy to see Brian Tyree Henry make it. Mm -hmm. um, I thought well-deserved nomination for him. I don't know why Jed Hirsch is here, though, but, you know, to each their own, I suppose. Why? Over Paul Dano? Eh. Yeah. I liked him better in the Batman, but I don't know. Let's I, would, go I would give anybody. Paul Dano the Batman over Jed Hirsch or Paul Dano in the Fableman. Same. <laughs> Well, let's move on to actor in a leading role. Oh, Lord. Which is a mess. <laughs> uh, which seems to be a very three way roller coaster here with the three on the left. But we've got Austin Butler, Colin Farrell, Brendan Fraser, Paul Mescal, and Bill Nye, the science guy. So I definitely think <laughs> between these three, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going to have to. Listen, I want it to be Brendan. I want it, man. Renaissance, baby, let's do it. He deserves it, but I got, I, I just, I think it's going to be Austin Butler. I, I think it is. And, and they go with these biopics and Rami Malik, and I, I just, I can't, I can't look past them picking Austin. I don't want it to be Austin Butler. I listen, Josie, I know, I know, I don't want it to be Austin, but I think it's going to be him. And you've got him with the Golden Globe, which, yeah, but BAFTA, right? I think you got the BAFTA. I know Brendan got the SAG, but he just didn't have anything else prior to that. He just didn't have any energy. I feel like I feel like Austin is going to take well, it, but I want, I so badly want it to be Brendan, so badly. Renaissance. Renaissance. <laughs> Bring him I'm back, so man. Torn. I think this is such a close, like, toss up. I don't even know what to do with myself. I personally, okay. If I were to pick one for myself, it would be Colin Farrell. I would love. Like, that would be so hype for me. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's happening. Uh, once he lost BAFTA after Banshees was sweeping, I was like, oh, okay, I thought Colin. he was going to win BAFTA. Me too. I th I, once Same. he lost BAFTA, Colin is done. So yeah. I had to put that to rest. <laughs> Colin was over <laughs> with. Put it away. <laughs> oh, but my God. Rip. Who uh, that SAG really threw me for a loop because Brendan now has the SAG, the Critics' Choice, and his own Golden Globe um, win as, or no, he didn't win the Golden Globe. He lost to Austin Butler. So we have the Critics' Choice yeah. and the SAG Bad. compared to Austin Butler's Golden Globe and BAFTA. BAFTA. Which, the last couple times though, so this is the stat that ultimately made me have to go with the evil. Um, and that was that <laughs> the last two times that they split... The BAFTA winner prevailed over the SAG winner at the Oscars uh, for Best Actor. And so I had to go with Austin Butler. They love them a biopic. They love them a real person. I think maybe a little more. Except than for Taryn Edgerton. Except for Taryn oh. Edgerton. I'll never be <laughs> over it. But I'm like, Why I didn't have me I mean, freaking what's her face for Judy? I mean, they love it so much. I'm like, they I'm can't. Sure they're like, like and they're my good conscience, I can't predict Austin Butler. It's called petty. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I will be so hyped if they open that envelope and say Brandon Fraser. I will jump out of my seat so hyped. I, I just hype. again, I was there when he won. I was sitting behind him when he won the. Hollywood Critics Association Award for Best Actor. And like he tensed up and then his wife put his hand, her hand on his back. And then his name was called and like that entire moment. And then like you Aww. see, like he's like, oh, well, I guess I gotta go up. <laughs> and like the energy that he brings onto the stage, I feel like it would be so much more well earned and so much more satisfying. We get to see that. Now, maybe like Austin Butler is the front runner. But I, again, my good consciousness, I can't 
No, I won't. And then people were just going <laughs> crazy at them. Elvis screen is all sta long standing ovations, right. people getting up out of their seats and shit. I just, I feel like Aust Austin Butler's got it. I, I just, I, I will just say, say there's a good chance that they could just do a wave of nostalgia this year. We obviously see it with Kihoi Kwan. That's, mm -hmm. you know, not to take anything away, because I do think he's also the best performance of that mm -hmm. category, hands down. Okay. But we see it there. We see it possibly with Jamie Lee Curtis and or Angela Bassett, both in supporting Angela Astros. Bassett. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> and we're seeing it with Michelle Yao as well. So... I think the Academy is feeling pretty nostalgic and Brendan Fraser has see, the yeah. story. He has a story. Yeah, he does. We have, he also has the Me Too kind of story behind him as well, like a comeback off of something actually traumatic. So it's not the also, same as like a different kind of comeback. Also bringing it back to that, um, the article we all hate with the dude that said Sweetheart and the lady director. Oh, yeah. I quickly jumped to the best actor category and it was split. Yeah, it was split. It was split down right in the, the middle. So I think, house. yeah. So Brendan is getting votes again. I predicted Brendan for the SAG, and I was like, no guts, no glory. He's probably not going to win, but I'm rooting for him. And then he won, and I'm like, there is a god. Yeah, because he he had like no steam before yeah. that. He, he I mean, it was really, really pushing. And up. it's an actor's branch, and the Golden yeah. Globes don't count. So really, the only thing that Austin has to his name is the BAFTA, and yeah. the only thing that Brendan has for him. Mm -hmm is the SAG. I'd like to still have hope because it is an actor's branch and actors yeah. will He's be got the story. Learning. He's got the story. And speaking oh. of that, Keezy's and Austin is still young. He's saying that Ke okay. if Key wins, Brendan will. And that, okay. Plus Austin is still young. Yeah. So I think that because um, they waited so long with Leonardo DiCaprio, like that's their usual narrative. Like you're still young. I mean, Timothy Chalamet should have won for Call Me By Your Name and he hasn't won since. And he's a really great oh, actor. And they lost to a man in a fat suit. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I can't disagree. So he lost to a man in a fat. They do love that too, as much as they love a good biopic. I, I don't know. They love a Soon. man in a in a fat suit. He's got to he's got to lose that Elvis voice soon, oh, man. Please, just I, the, the fact that I I got attacked on Twitter by because <laughs> I said like, oh, he needs to dish the voice, and they were like. He's not doing any voice. That's how he sounds. Oh I'm like, God. look at this eight minute long video comparing his voice before and now and tell me right. I'm wrong. Like, come on, man. Even G. Kobe says, get rid of that Please. damn voice. We are tired. You're from California, sir. You don't have no damn Southern accent. <laughs> no, I just I mean, think that, that he probably damaged his vocal cord because it's probably, for example, for Daisy Jones and the Six, they most of the people ended up doing their own singing. But mm. for a moment, they had debated doing stunt vocals. So it's like a, it's a legit thing, stunt vocals. And he probably like exercised it too much. And to get to that kind of baritone. Listen, I'm going to say something that I have not put on Twitter yet. Because I know Ooh, I'm going I'm to get roasted. I'm going to get roasted, <laughs> but I, I still want to put it on. Our girl, Kenzie, who was going to be here tonight, would have drugged the hell out of me for saying this. Because she is a butler girl. Uh -oh. Is Al okay? I'm not saying all he did was impersonate. Okay, I'm not. I, I do oh, think man. Austin Butler went a little deeper. Is Elvis Presley not the easiest celebrity to impersonate? His Bruno voice? Mars. So many. His Bruno voice? Mars did it for a living yeah. when he was nine years old. Yeah. I mean, come on. Elvis is the easiest, whether it's the singing voice, the talking voice, the mannerism. And that's not taken away from it. I think Austin Butler, like, again, I know that I'm being petty, <laughs> but I think Austin Butler that. did a great job. He carries the movie and yeah. he is the reason people love it. We're not we're not loving it because no, of the yeah. Ferris wheel that turns into an eye. <laughs> it's because of Austin Wild Butler. Now that being said, I'm gonna drag myself to Larry. I think I don't remember if I put this in my burner account or <laughs> close friends. Uh oh. Ooh. But here's the thing that bothers me. Again, petty. You would rather give an award to an Elvis impersonation and a Freddie Mercury impersonation as well. A movie that was very biphobic. Very. <sighs> that, that to people that are, again, are acting as people that have passed on and have no say in how they're portrayed instead of awarding Taryn Edgerton, who worked closely with yeah. Elton John. Closely. You would rather give an award to someone that it has no right in how they're being portrayed to the world versus someone that actually shared like stuff that they had never admitted. Yep. They bared their soul, and you do not give them a nomination. 
Do you think that oh, Banshees okay. and the whole Banshees team missed an opportunity to really push Colin Farrell for a lifetime achievement style win, though? Because I think they did. I mean, he's put in so many years mm -hmm. of amazing, varied. I mean, he his he performances. Want to win. <laughs> his performances range <laughs> like... so insane <laughs> right. from each other. Even just last year. I mean, look at the three performances. We had the Penguin, we had Banshees, and we had After Yang. All actor. three very different performances all three amazing i think i don't know i think they should have really tried that angle a little bit more like really tried the hey colin's really been putting in great work for years and years and years and years yeah because they have it not was between them. brendan and colin me I really too which was that Same. tall i love you my dear i'm glad you're here and no, bill you're somebody else could have bill you're there. great in pirates of the caribbean thank you for <gasps> my childhood oh we I didn't even see Living, so I can't really say. I haven't seen um, Living. That's why I'm like, thank you for my childhood. <laughs> Eventually, I'll catch up. Uh-oh, Mike's saying put money down oh, for that Colin Farrell upset. Let's talk about it. That's, that's about the dark horse. Hey. Let Larry cook. Oh. <laughs> Austin's never letting that No, go. that's why we can't, we can't give him the award. We can't give him the award. He'll never let go of the voice. Yeah, he got to let go of that. He's up in full-on... Uh, THR interviews, just talking in the voice. I'm like, what is going on, bro? You at uh, round tables talking in the Elvis voice. Can y'all not like that down? Say, I mm. enjoy hitting on Janelle Monet in that Elvis voice. <laughs> right. Mm. Didn't see Elvis, but I'm assuming they didn't address Elvis uh, like to get they, they just said he was older than her. They did they yeah. very quickly uh tiptoed around how old Priscilla was when they first started seeing and yeah. how old Elvis was in compared. They tiptoed around that. It was acknowledged. that. They just didn't like it was acknowledged, but it was unaddressed. You're like, yeah, she's younger exactly. than He's him. Like, Boop, that's it. Not and 14. They, they didn't say that. Nope. But y'all, we're going to move into a oh. very messy category here. Um, with actress in a supporting role, we've got some strong contenders here. Um, with Angela Bassett, Hong Chow, Carrie Condon, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Stephanie Hsu. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I look at this category, folks, and I'm just like, I don't know how you could pass by Queen Ramonda with any of these performances. I'm sorry, I, I just don't know. I, I, I got, I wanted to be Angela Bassett, but. I'm I, I'm kind of like Josie with the SAG. I was like, maybe Jamie Lee Curtis, and it's her due time. Maybe it's a career award. Hey, yeah, we're Angela Bassett give you not one. winning <sighs> SAG really hurt yeah. her chances. I thought she, she had SAG. Damn it! <laughs> and Angela Bassett did the thing. Come on, she was a damn <laughs> meme. People vote for her. The meme. <laughs> This is such a tough category. Honestly, and you know, Hung Chow, great work, but I, she's probably last, I think, here. Yeah. Stephanie is probably the next up uh, right above her. Because she didn't get anything three. besides what? The Spirit Award? Yeah, I, which I think she got know, that. And that doesn't not really, that's not gonna do that. And she didn't she just won like Rising Star, I think, at Spirit. So it's not oh, like Oh, I thought she got supporting. Oh, I don't yeah, know that's... what I just this is like Hung Chow is great. Then Chow's putting amazing. Jamie Lee Curtis in there was just like, come on. Oh, God. I really wish people would apply the energy that I'm reading about Jamie Lee Curtis to Angela Bassett. Like, yeah. everybody just talking about her time, and we've loved her for so long, and this was unexpected yeah. or whatever. Angela Bassett should have an Oscar already. Like, if you're going to award somebody for a career worth of work, it should be Angela. No right. shade to Jamie Lee Curtis, but she has not given... Academy Award level performances on a consistent basis like Angela Bassett has. So cooking, you cooking. And just head to head their performances. Let's just be clear. Uh Angela Bassett's Ramonda sits over Jamie Lee Curtis's performance. It just is what it is. Right. It's the weakest performance here. I the auditor, the auditor. I mean, was I'm maybe sure got Angela Bassett got a nomination out of that one performance in the throne room. Like that's that one yeah. scene. Oh, that and that's scene enough. Is, it's enough. Geez, it literally clears chills. out everyone else. <laughs> chills. Listen, I would actually take out Jamie Lee Curtis and put Dolly De Leon in here. Me too. I, I think there were much more deserving. Or one of the women from Women Talking. <laughs> literally. 
literally any take a pick from anybody from women talking. Snag, snag them up, put them in this category. I'm like, man, come on, bro. Come on. All that said, I want oh, so if I would uh, my happy reaction will be if Angela Bassett's name is called that. I will jump That's out of my insane. seat. I will be so hyped. Yeah. Unfortunately, she's fallen to third after SAG for me. Mm-hmm. I I really struggle. She could still Regina King her way to this win, but it's a comic Hey-o. book movie. That's the next yeah. like strike against yeah. her. Is are they I feel like that's also gonna be held against her, is that she's nominated for a comic book film and we all know how they feel about Marvel but specifically. Look, but look at Jamie Lee Curtis and everything we want <sighs> once. Look at all that right, film. Kind of it defies genre. It does, but I don't think they feel like Black Panther defies what genre. Yeah, so that's why I think it <laughs> yeah. might just go to Carrie Condon. But I personally, I'm oh, rooting man. and predicting Angela. Okay. For, I'm glad you're, for you're holding out, Josie. Thank you. Yeah, because I'll I got, do it for I, all of us. Yes, please hold out because I my <laughs> prediction is Jamie Lee. Unfortunately, yeah. I, I just... I'll make a fool of myself for society. <laughs> Mike saying, "Keep it away from Jamie Lee." <laughs> yes, keep it away. I'm just nothing so, against her. I thought she was cool. The amount of times that I quote, I see a story here <laughs> with my friends. It's fine, uh, but I, I wouldn't just... give it to her. People were shocked. That's what I've also noticed, that people were just surprised by her in that role. I don't know. So they, they just took an unexpected role for making it one of the best. I, I, don't, I don't really know. Who knows? Uh, Ooh, Jamie just... Lee Curtis was more impressive in Freaky I, Friday. Yes. I agree. Yes. When she won the SAG, I just pretended it was for Freaky Friday. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm really torn. I've been going back and forth again between Carrie Condon and Jamie Lee Curtis on who I think will win this award. I I had Carrie before, but man, I don't know that, that lifetime achievement narrative feels yeah. real strong yeah. with Jamie Lee Curtis yeah. right now that I I'm think like, the three oh. of them could be a sure possibility. Jamie Lee Curtis has the sag, Carrie Condon has the BAFTA, right? Yeah, yeah, and then Angela has um, the Globe and the Critics' the Choice, but... Yeah, <clears throat> so so here's the thing. <laughs> it could be any of them. <laughs> yeah, You know what it's, I wouldn't be awesome. mad at? I wouldn't be mad if they, you know, bickered and split votes and Stephanie popped up and snatched the award. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would be a little bit mad because I want Angela, but Larry, that's my I number love two. You. I don't think that's happening. <laughs> yeah, it's, she, I wish like it you, was. It was like you were saying earlier, she's second from the bottom. She has uh, no listen. They clipped her wings by putting Jamie Lee Curtis in this. They completely clipped. Yeah, her wings. it's just, and I saw people like this. One of these people in one of the anonymous ballots, it was like him and his partner were arguing because his partner was like Stephanie was much better. And he was like, "No, Jamie Lee," and I'm like, "Sir, hand over your card to your partner then, because <laughs> they're the one with sense. They're trying to they're trying to gear you to the good performance." Okay, so. We got Angela down here. We got Jamie up here. So I'm I'm gonna stick with my original prediction. I'm gonna say Carrie. Um, oh, I'm y'all a, I'm both a, predicting Carrie. I'm a, no, she predicted Angela. Oh, that's right. That, so oh, I'm gonna predict look Carrie look Condon. We're, we'll we'll be just like the Oscars. We're gonna split it. Yep, I think maybe I people, hope I'm right. <laughs> people are gonna I hope be you torn. Are too. They're going to be torn between who do we give the lifetime to, and ultimately Carrie will, will win out. And plus, it's gonna be like. <laughs> Plus, if I have to choose between Carrie Condon and Jamie Lee Curtis, who gave the better performance, it's Carrie Condon. Yeah. I think Carrie Condon was actually much better in her. I'm film, actually surprised. So. I didn't notice Carrie. I saw the movie before any nominations came out, and I didn't think it was such a great performance until everyone started bringing it out. And I'm like, okay. Ooh. You didn't see you. Carrie Feckin Condon, Josie? <laughs> I didn't think she was anything special. I was more drawn to. Oh my god! Did I freeze? No. <laughs> Are good. Y'all... Where do you? Josie, come oh, back, no, girl. Josie. Oh, now she's frozen. Oh no! <laughs> she just spoke herself into the frozen abyss. Uh, oh no! I'm oh, sorry. she's You're back. back. She's You're back. back. <laughs> Anyways, I I wasn't focused on. I was focused on Colin Farrell. I, I was more interested in mm-hmm. his. Like I think he carries the story so well, and Barry. But I need to go back because everyone's loving Carrie's performance. I'm Unpopular you, Josie, in opinion. I'm with you. I was I was nodding off while watching the movie. But no, I'm like, surprised. Hey. I'm I was genuinely surprised, and I think I'm still surprised. But I'm just ex- I've accepted I've accepted it at this point. She won the BAFTA. And I'm like, okay. We Plus, can I don't think... the donkey. Okay, well, Jenny Ooh. can get in this category. Look. Look. See, that's the thing, Jenny. 
Jenny should have been nominated. Jenny, <laughs> nominate Jenny, damn it. Yeah, EO. I really think that. Uh, since I'm not going, ultimately I went EEAAO on original screenplay. I think maybe they'll want to give Banshee something, and so mm. Carrie can sneak in and grab them their oh, only the win Banshees. of the night. Match a little something. Banshees deserves original screenplay, mate. <laughs> <laughs> not the next. No. It don't deserve it's nothing. It does fucking deserve me. it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Made me deserve another hour of sleep. Oh. Uh, but we got John Lee, a tax accountant. Okay. Can't vote for Jamie Lee because that was not believable. As an IRS John, are you telling you me feel, this is not butt plugs <laughs> as awards for your profession, sir? This was you not the representation plug. John Lee was asking for, Larry. <laughs> Yeah, he wanted a legit IRS <laughs> performance, okay? Now, did anybody, when you were first watching EEA, you look at them awards a little? I was like, the fuck is that over there? Oh, no, I knew. No, it I knew. knew. Uh, yeah, I yeah like, me and Josie were on the up and up, okay? Larry and I, right, I was like, what's I was happening? like, what is that over in the corner, bro? That look a little <laughs> sus. And then when she I said, think, I see, okay. I get this for seeing a lot of bullshit, I said, oh, hell no, they did not put that in the script. I can't. Okay, but this winning... If Jamie Lee wins during tax season, wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> if Jamie Lynn wins, okay, here's my not Lynn. If Jamie we should Lee, all get free like accountants doing yeah, our taxes please. for us, I need you all to understand. If Ki Hoi Kwan and Jamie Lee Curtis sweep the supporting actresses, and Michelle Yeoh does not win. Oh, I might lose my mind. I just need everyone to understand. If Jamie Lee wins Sunday night and Michelle loses, oh, I, I will not be too. okay. <laughs> I'm losing it. Okay, well, hold Leo, on. I have a question Leo. for you guys. I got a question real quick. Do you yeah. think Michelle, if Michelle Williams was in this category, she would have been the winner? Ugh, probably. Because I was like, I don't know. Yeah. People are, I've seen that all over Twitter, and I'm like, I still think it's pretty strong with her in there. I'm like, I still think Angela, Carrie, and Jamie well, have a good chance with her in there. I don't know, because Michelle also has the, like, lifetime narrative going yeah, for her, too. True. Like, she's been nominated so, so many much. nominations, yeah. I think she would have she would have had a chance, unlike lead, where she has zero chance of winning and shouldn't zero. even be in the category. But uh, her performance was not better than the performances that were left off the board. Just going to say that. But... <laughs> um, I'm just glad Fablemans didn't get in for best hair and makeup with that damn wig they put on Michelle Williams' head. <laughs> I thought the wig was I. Right, nah, man. girl, that wig, okay. that wig was wigging. Okay, that's the only, that's the <laughs> nicest way I can put it. It was an I right, little wig. Mm. But speaking of wigs, we're going to go to actress in a leading role with Kate Blanchett, <sighs> Ana de Armas for Blonde. Does listen? That shouldn't even be there. Okay, uh, Andrea hate, Riseboro. I hate the movie. Hate, but she was good. Mm. Hate, she's I. I hate it. Um, Andrea Riseboro, which sketchy little campaign uh, to get in, but she did have. I, I did think she was great in the movie. So Michelle Williams and Michelle Yo, and I feel like anytime you say Michelle for actress in a leading role, you're talking about Yo. I almost Williams voted Michelle Williams in the Cinemania world form. Because oh. I didn't read the second name and then I was like, wait, oh. no, wrong Michelle. Can you imagine? <laughs> I would have been right shook. Michelle. I would have been shook. Um, wrong Michelle. I would have messaged you like, Larry, please. <laughs> please. Could you imagine? Someone put this. Luke Harefield, who's another YouTuber, was like, how would you feel if Oscar Knight, they said Michelle and then paused and said Williams. Oh my God. I said my house would burn to the ground. You don't don't play with me. <laughs> you hear it. me? Lose it. But wait. Listen. And the comments. Listen. Quentin Tarantino, Kate Blanchett. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. Well, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. We got to talk about this category because Danielle Deadweiler and Viola Davis got absolutely snubbed out of this shit. No, no matter I'm what listening. that person, that actor that says, random. He was listen. Reveal he was yourself. Dead. I know him well. He voted for Anna de Armas because she was naked and he was thirsting. You hear Thirsty. me? And she was getting all kind of nasty ish going on in that movie. Uh, she had good scenes. I liked that very deranged scene where she's singing and then she like scratches her face and I'm like, pop off, girl. 
but I other just, than that, it's I'm I was so shocked that it was here. But honestly, yeah. if you're gonna give it to if you're gonna give a nomination to Austin Butler as Elvis. <coughs> I just I need Marilyn to get an Elvis like biopic. I'm Why? tired yeah, of her no, getting respectful the, um, stuff. Get, stop giving respectful. her this abuse bullshit. Right. Give her one that kind of glosses over all the bad and just gives us the pretty shit like you did with the Elvis. But right. honestly, I would drop Michelle all Williams with uh, My Week with Marilyn. I haven't Which, seen it in so long, but I just remember... Energy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it in so long, but I remember liking it. Most oh, I love it. it. I love Michelle it. Williams was good. She was great. No, I would drop everyone except Kate Blanchett and Michelle Yao to put in Dead Weiler and Viola Davis. And Viola. All the other three are below yep. those two performances for me. Um, Agreed. Yeah, but so Andrea, if any, if any out of those three, I think Andrea could be here. <laughs> out of those three, I'm saying the three you would have dropped. I'm like, okay. Let's I could drop Anna them. and Michelle Williams <laughs> completely. Um, well, Andrea Michelle, Wilson. category fraud. Michelle, yeah. category fraud. She getting her Ooh. little buddies and friends to uh, <laughs> eat about. And to, oh, Michelle, oh. yeah. Let's just, Whole again, let's just shit? pretend nobody else exists. It's just Kate Blanchett and Michelle, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's what the comments are saying, yo, or Blanchett. <sighs> Yo. The split the, the split down the middle at the Yo. Golden Globes. Yo. Yo. Look. Yo. I tried Yo. to pretend. I tried <laughs> to keep it I tried to keep it cool throughout award season and be like, "Look, Kate is great, so I would be okay with her winning." I would not. I'm sorry. The more the closer we've gotten to this award show. No, Larry. Don't lie to yourself. I Kate will not great. be okay. Uh, Kate is wonderful in that She's movie. She's great. She is great. But this is Michelle Yao's damn award. Yes. Period. Even Kate. Point Even blank. Kate is pushing for Michelle Yao discreetly. She's been posting <laughs> pictures with her. And all the people that were saying that she was whatever happened the other day on Instagram. Oh, hush. God. Nah, hush. Whatever. She didn't say anything that wasn't false. All and she posted true. an article. It wasn't her own award. It wasn't even her own words. She was just like, look at this great article. It's about more yeah. than just me. It's about everything. And so the anonymous ballot actually unanimously said uh, uh, Michelle Yeoh. Which is I crazy. Think I think that's the first Kate. time that an anonymous ballot has been so inclined with what we'll probably see. Yeah, I feel like the tide, whatever it was, because if she had, uh, like going into the SAG Awards, I was a little bit defeated because I felt like Kate was starting to pull away. But ever since the SAG Awards, there's just this enormous push for Michelle. Like there... It's just, I don't know, mm -hmm. even know how to explain it really, but all of the momentum is on her. Yep. Not like Brendan and not even like Jamie Lee, who won the SAG Awards to get back in their races. This one just like turned the tide solidly to Michelle Yeo yeah, right at the perfect time. And I, just seeing those ballots actually was shocking. Um, some of them were like, no, I know a lot of people who do not like tar at all. And same, they're same, not going to vote for they're not going to vote for Kate Blanchett, period, uh, because of that. And I do think a lot of people are thinking, you know, she's got two and Michelle has zero. <laughs> and it's the sad, the sad truth of it, you know, Ooh, John Lee couldn't whoa. stand Michelle Williams and Paperman's. I like Michelle. I thought she her her story offered a little tea to that movie because I thought it would have no. been kind of boring. Out no, there. I wasn't. Uh, I thought I like I said, overacting in a bad wig. That was Michelle Williams and the Fable. I man. wouldn't call it no overacting. I mm. thought she was. I thought she was, was a good what character, was I, man. <gasps> <gasps> I was like it Michelle is. Williams, like half of the movie. Come on. As my co-host from Film Talk, Juliana Melendez at Captain Melendez on Twitter says, it's a Judy Garland impression. Ah, uh, well, hey, mm. I thought Judy deserved the award. But anyway, that's a good oh! for the Oh, okay. Leo! Uh, I'm, I'm going to this comment here with Mike so I can save myself. Uh, <laughs> let Ana de Armas in, for real. Mm. I don't know. Got, got a couple of comments uh, from Marco. Margo got robbed. Look, if we were going to do another third, I do think Margo was great. Uh, mm -hmm. R.I.P. Diego Calva, you deserve to be in this damn oh, conversation this year. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> Rent, bro. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I'm predicting, and I want Michelle Yao to win this award. 
Yeah, I think we're all I think we're all with you there predicting and want Michelle. It's just so I mean, uh, this is just a crazy one to me, because if you had asked me two weeks ago, I think if you had asked most people two weeks ago, I think our predictions would have probably been Blanchett, like want Yao, predict Blanchett. Uh, All of the pundits (laughs) were like solidly in Kate Blanchett's corner. And then it just turned. (laughs) I've been here (laughs) since the beginning. (laughs) I I, I never have faith in the Academy. I feel like the Academy is always going to do the worst possible. Possible. They're always going to screw us in the end. But um, no, I'm probably going to record my reaction to the lead actress. Um, and again, if Kate Blanchett's name is called, it's probably not going to be a very nice reaction. <laughs> yeah, same. I'm going to be very upset if Kate wins this. I love if you, Kate. Anybody besides but- Michelle, yo, I'm going to have a feeling. <sighs> We'll see you in three years, Kate. You'll be back what? nominated for an Oscar. Like, She's it's already fine. won a couple. So Give this shit so- to Michelle. Yeah. Give it to Michelle, yo. I, and she knows it. She doesn't. I. When was it? She she accepted an award recently for Tar, and she said like, "Why are you guys giving me awards? This is so silly." Blah blah blah. And I heard that turned the Academy off, which I'm glad. I'm like, good. It was that Critics' Choice, I think, where she went up there and was oh. like, "Who cares yeah. about these awards?" <laughs> <laughs> she said give it to these other women basically so uh i hope the academy said yes please sure we will <laughs> <laughs> all right we got another one that i i feel like is a lock now mm-hmm. after dga daniels but, yeah i mean we got nominees <laughs> here though we've got the banshees eao fableman spielberg tar todd field and triangle of sadness ruben constant struggling. Uh, but I think it's all it's definitely the Daniels. Daniels. I don't think anybody else has a chance here. Run away. Moving on. Uh, y'all think Spielberg though? Could Dark and, Horse and none and none for and none for Steven Spielberg. <laughs> I was gonna ask you though, could he dark horse his way into this? No. I, I think it's possible. I don't I think, think so. he's I think the only possible. possible upset. He's the, he's the only possible. Way. Yeah. The yeah. Daniels Nobody beat else. Spielberg at DGA. Yeah, I mean yeah. Uh, Spielberg didn't even win BAFTA, where you know the Europeans didn't like EEAO clearly, but even when clearly. the Daniels lost over there, it was Berger for All Quiet, and he didn't even get an Oscar nomination. So <laughs> I I think this one is a uh, you know Spielberg. They tried, they've tried to push it, but it's over. Spielberg, you'll be you'll Daniels. probably be back too, but it's over. The Daniels, Chazelle should have gotten a directing nom. Mm. It's easy. I know y'all love Babylon, but for me, he can stay to the side. Mm, I would have given, given it to him now. I would have given it to him. Look, I would have taken out, actually, I would have taken out Todd Field and put in Gina, personally. Would, Gina yeah, Prince well, Bridewood in Gina. Todd Field. We need, a, we need a woman in this category. With all I would have taken out Martin had. McDonough. I would have taken out Steven Spielberg. Oh, well. Let's let come on. Dude, I just how many think times we've been in this running. Get, get it's just his way. directing is better. Like I don't know, the Tar is just not a director's movie at all. Like, yeah, that's that's Kate Blanchett, man. Yeah, Ooh. that movie, even with a different director, Kate carries it. You know, right. Whereas Gina, I mean, she directed the hell out that of Woman, Woman King. King. Like yeah. I'm so tired of them disrespecting old girl. Come and on, Sarah now. Polly. Even I mean, I'm like, dude, women talking. <sighs> yeah. And they they give all these accolades to the Fablemans and Steven Spielberg being so personal. Charlotte Wells did the same damn thing in After right. Sun <laughs> and arguably did it better. So, <laughs> shit, I would agree with you. Definitely did it better, but yeah. yeah. Oh well, but Daniels. I mean, come on. If you want to talk about a director, like a team that directed their movie, Daniels, give it to them. Give them their due. Give it to them. And speaking of Daniels and EAO, and that'll be my prediction, but let's go down the list, y'all, for our nominees. Do we have for to best read picture. the list? Oh, yes, highlight Josie, highlight John the list coming the here. He said, <laughs> Natalie Portman, present the all-male directors category again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for, for best picture, we've got All Quiet, Avatar 2, Woo. The Banshees of Inna Sharon, Woo. Elvis, EAO, The Fablemans, Woo. Tar, Top Gun, Woo. Triangle and women talking. Now, is this the first time? Is this the first time two sequels have been up? Avatar Maybe. two and Top Gun. Ah, it could be actually. Maybe that's the first time. That's cool. 
Laser's going Avatar. I'm sorry, Laser. Ooh. We gotta go. Oh my god. EAAO is definitely it. It's also we got a bunch of blockbusters this year. Yeah, we did nice. a lot. Yeah, even Avatar, everything, everyone on Switch is an indie movie. It was still blockbuster. Had, yeah. I would argue. So people are saying, you know, Top Gun has really run with the the narrative Top that it saves not cinema. People must. <laughs> no, so it people. ran with the the <laughs> narrative that it saved movie theaters. But I would argue everything, everywhere, all at once was maybe even just as, if not more, pivotal because it saved medium to small film. Like it's a film nobody knew about. It was carried by critics. Yep. Yeah, we've seen blockbusters make big money. I mean, No Way Home already saved movie theaters then, if you want to argue of a blockbuster. Billy, baby! I mean, it made more than Top Gun, so what are we talking about? So... I think it was the HCA when they kept winning so many awards for everything, everyone at once, and I think it was Ki Hui Kwan who thanked the critics because without us, this film wouldn't have gotten the attention it got. Critics pushed for that film from the beginning. Really did. I remember yeah. I saw it at a screening and I was like, this needs to be nominated for Best Picture. Right. Oh this my God. I seen, it at a, I seen it at a screening. Everybody was laughing. Everybody was loving it. I'm like, this has got to be a Best Picture nominee, bro. Got I was it. hoping. I was just hoping and praying. It's, it was my favorite people year. People kept saying it wasn't going to oh, happen because yeah. it was too yeah. weird. And it's just proving that the academy is changing. The old ways pundits used to predict these awards aren't working because it is changing. It is shifting. And we are starting to see that critics do have more power in mm. what gets nominated and what doesn't. Yeah. G. Colby's theater for EEAAO was packed. Even cousin wanted to see it after I raved about it and watched the trailer. Yeah, a lot of word of mouth carried this as well. Like a lot of yeah. people that watched this movie loved it, loved it. I mean, I talked to people who aren't even really in the movies or in the film that much, but they were like, "Oh yeah, that EAO yeah. is really no, good." No, I saw it at um, you know, when they did the IMAX screenings right before it released. Yeah, at select at select theaters. There was Lucky. one here in New York. <laughs> I didn't get and the I, IMAX one. I went. <laughs> And literally, I went to IMAX at Lincoln Square. It's the largest IMAX in the country. And let me tell you, that was packed. Packed? It wow. was packed. And it was right before its official release, like its nationwide release. Holy smokes. Yeah, see, the word of mouth really carried this one. The critics definitely raved about this movie. And Rekka Cooney. Rekka yeah. Cooney, baby. <laughs> I don't think anything, you guys think anything could sneak up, though? Uh, no. No. What's, I up, mean, what's up with the all quiet predictions? What's what's up with that? Uh, come on, nineteen seventeen. Nineteen seventeen got nominated for so many things, and then it didn't <laughs> win. And it actually was stronger leading up yeah. to the Oscars. Like nineteen seventeen was probably even the slight front runner over Parasite. They were pretty neck and neck. And All Quiet hasn't even done half of what nineteen seventeen did leading up. Uh, Banshees had. <laughs> Banshees had early steam, but it's fallen off. Very uh, much fallen off. Some people yeah. still are trying to make Top Gun Maverick happen. Y'all, it's not. No, it's no, not ja, it's not it. it. <laughs> we're not even gonna. We're not gonna manifest that energy. I'm not I'm even tired. gonna say it. I'm not even gonna and say, even oh, it's wins. a dark horse. Nope, I'm not. And no. even if in some universe it does win, I'm glad I never predicted it. <laughs> Like people are really, I mean, yeah, once it snuck that screenplay nomination, people really were like, okay, Top Gun in the preferential ballot. But honestly, if PGA didn't put all that preferential ballot stuff to rest when EEAO won the preferential ballot over Top Gun Maverick at the Producers Guild, that was it. It's, it's, it's everything everywhere. I mean, I remember early, 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 early in the race, people were like, oh, it might be the Fablemans that might sneak up. No, that's not happening. Fam. People were predicting Fablemans because it won a tiff, and I was there like, ha, no. <laughs> Psych. Yeah, but no. yeah, everybody's pretty much EAO, uh, G. Colby's, Banshees, and Fablemans, maybe. Eh, I would say they really lost their chances in this, the second half of the race here. But guys, we got through every single category except the shorts, y'all. Listen, I didn't watch the shorts, so I would have had to guess, and I would have been looking really weird. I had to print well, my short names. <laughs> my Stranger shorts are all gate. like my least favorites. <laughs> Strangers at the Gate is what I'm predicting, but I didn't like it. 
Oop, sorry. Now, if you how's like that my year of dicks? I might have to go check that out. I, I want my year of dicks to win. I, <laughs> I thought that one was really, it's the only one I've seen. Some people are predicting the boy, the mole, the yes. fox, and the horse. That's what I'm predicting, but it was my least favorite. What are these have, movies, have, man? Yeah. The title sounds so interesting. That one is an Apple short, which you can watch with a subscription, which is the only okay. thing I've learned recently. Um, My year of dicks was on Hulu, and mm -hmm. it's on Vimeo. Okay. I think, and then what? Netflix has at least the Martha um, one for documentary. Does HBO so. have a few, Max? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Larry, you the short <laughs> Man, I, I go and just see went with you to those screenings, movie. man. To those those short screenings. I, just, I know. I, I go to those little short screenings, but I think my picks were just Irish Goodbye, uh, the Stranger at the Gate, and then the Boy. Stranger the Mole, at the Gate, the Irish Goodbye, and My Year of Dicks. I hope it's my year. Somebody dicks. leaving the party and not saying nothing? Is that the whole movie? Uh, well, kind of. It's more of a comedy. That one is available somewhere to watch for sure. But that one okay. at like the BAFTAs. So some of them be, will be hard. available on YouTube la sometime. Like I know last year, a few of them were on YouTube. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. They usually yeah. release them. Like Women Talking, they're putting on a Prime video this week only leading up to the Oscars and then taking it back off. So if you haven't seen Women Talking, now's your chance. <laughs> oh, shit. We're about to snatch it right up. Okay. Literally, yeah. oh, Monday, it it's coming back off on Monday. So <laughs> go watch Women Talking if you haven't seen it. <laughs> but guys, y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to the live stream. We're going to go around here and everybody let the people know where they can find you and what's coming up on your platform, starting with Josie. Where can the people find you? Well, you can find me at the Josie Marie on Twitter and Letterboxd. You can also find me on Phone Posers, at Phone Posers. Awesome. Guys, go follow. Go follow. And Larry, let us know where we can find you and what you got coming up. Yes, you can find me at Chili Boy Productions here on YouTube as well as Twitter and Instagram. I'll be doing a recap and review of the Oscars as well as the finale uh, for The Last of Us also on Sunday, right after the Oscars. Me and Hannah will be reacting to that. But nice. yeah, I, I ranked all the, the nominees, the laser. I don't know if you should watch it because <laughs> Avatar's not as high as you'd like. I can already promise you. But uh, I ranked them. I've done a lot of Oscar content, so fun times. Yeah, Larry's been pumping out the Oscar content, y'all. I was going to have a full ranking, and unfortunately, a live stream the other day ran so long. I could not pump it out. But I was glad that I could get these wonderful guests over here. But y'all, if you're new to the channel, what you doing? Hit that subscribe button down below, y'all. We have a live stream coming up Sunday for Oscars. We'll be live reacting with my usual co-host on the Sunday live stream, Loretto Marcellus Durden over on Twitter. So be sure to tune into that. But guys, we'll see you next time.